Welcome back to Glenn Sky McCord, a classic that's non classic. This is episode number 1680 and double shot number 1534. Yeah, basically, as this episode, 20 episodes away from episode 1700 for the series. Now, first, now both these now both these trades are the final trades discussed for one for an event, and the other for a character for a writer's run for the book. Just like last episode. First up, we have Future State Suicide Squad. Yep, that is literally what this thing is. Yep. Now, uh, not going to discuss Future State Suicide Squad or Swamp Thing. Why? Or discuss them. Now. <laughs> Sorry about that. In the case of Teen Titans Academy, all this is is just pure setup. The whole point of this mini series is that it sets up the ongoing Teen Titans Academy. That's literally it. That's all this is. Basically, we have sort of a future preview. That's kind of how it is. And it's okay. Of course, the first thing you can hear is Suicide Squad because I've already discussed this one, so I'm not going to be discussing Suicide Squad again. Yeah, let's get past this one. Now, this. Uh, this mini series was already collecting the first trade for the current room for Suicide Squad. Now, T Titans, of course, is by Tim Sherman, arced by Rafael Salvador. Now, pretty much in the way, this would kind of in the way have, even though it's a future safe book, it kind of sets up Titans Academy. It also brings the return of this guy, Red X. And you're probably thinking, who the heck is Red X? <sighs> well, here's the thing with that. He's a character from the 2003 Teen Titans TV show. Which, here's the thing. When this piece news came out last year, it had been 18 years since the first episode aired. The series itself aired for five seasons. Yes, and it's a series people do like. I like Teen Titans Go. No one likes that. The original version of the of the first person. Now, this the show lasted from 2003 to 2006. So, at the time this, these issues came out, it had been pretty much about 15 years since the end of the series. <coughs> Now, on the show, there were two Red X's. The first one was the alternate identity for for Robin, who uh, they did confirm the show to be Dick Grayson. <laughs> the second one, they never actually figured out exactly who the heck this guy is, because... That was probably by far the one of two plot threads <clears throat> they had for the show. The other was basically what Slade looked like under his mask. A.K.A. frickin' Deathstroke. Which someone, someone did point this out though, and I do agree with the sentiment over this. Apparently Deathstroke was too threatening, too threatening for kids. But Brother Blood was no problem. How is Brother Blood okay for a name and not Deathstroke? It's frickin' Deathstroke, voiced by Ron Perlman. Yeah. <laughs> now here's the thing about this book. The guy who writes this book is the current writer of Teen Titans Academy. And they brought in Red X. And, well, here's the thing. It's been almost a year since the series started, and they still have not answered the frickin' question. Who the heck is Red X? Who's who's the guy in the mask? It's not Dick Grayson because he's in the book. He's Nightwing. Now, next was all about Shazam, a.k.a. Captain Marvel. Of course, they can't call the book Captain Marvel because of rights because of Marvel. Why the heck to call the character Shazam makes no freaking sense. Name of the wizard. And this is also written by Tim Sheridan. Yep. Now, this book is simply put, basically, where Captain Marvel is part of the Justice League. And the Justice League has just him, the question, which that seems a bit odd, because in the comics, 
The question never joined the Justice League. Vixen did, but not the question. Yep. And aside for the question, and Vixen, there's also Miss Martian, Bunker, yes, Bunker, and the second Power Girl. That's your Justice League for you. I'm like, that's a weird Justice League. Oh yeah, and here's the thing. The get this. The Justice League is based out of Detroit. First time since the eighties. Like, okay, that's interesting. And of course the people question why is his name acting so weird? And here's the thing. They kept calling him Billy. They know he's Billy Batson. But they said don't call him Billy. That's a thing in the series. And they explained the reason why. Nucron, a demon from DC Comics, had to um, separate the two set people. And Billy Batson is basically sent in freaking hell. For reasons. Yep. And dead me- here's the thing. The question, basically, is actually a bit odd in the series. And in terms of the reason why I forward it, because he possessed by freaking dead man. I'm like, wow, that's interesting. Yep. And of course, the very end, Billy Bats is freed, and then you said someone else down there. But I found this miniseries pretty good. Now, it's not a terrible miniseries. They're all something about deaths, per se. <clears throat> they apparently had it where the Creeper, yes, the Creeper, apparently gets killed by Captain Marvel. Why did he kill him? Don't know. There's also this mysterious person who. Uh, really wanted him to say Shazam so badly. And we also have, get this, the Spectre showing up. Yes, the Spectre. And he takes him to the JSA headquarters in a place called Morningside Heights, which I'm like, uh, the JSA has never headquartered here before. They've had guard New York City, Gotham City, Washington, D.C., Mountain Point, but Morningside Heights? That's kind of weird. But it's great to see the JSA table. Yep. And then we have this woman show up. Who this person is? Uh, it doesn't go anywhere. And of course, there's a Swamp Thing mini series, which I've discussed it before. In the Swamp, or the first year of a Swamp Thing, I'm not going to discuss it. I'm just going to move on. There is, however, one more thing to talk about here. The Black Adam. Yep, Future State Black Adam. Yep. This was a multi-part feature that basically is bit, it just is it put uh, Black Adam in the Future State timeline. Yep. It's a really good story. Uh, the writer for it is Jeremy Adams. And you're thinking, hmm, that name sounds familiar. Is, does this guy write The Flash? Yes, he does. And if you like The Flash, you will love this particular story. It's just really good. Yeah. I love it. It's by far the best story of all. We also have a debut of the Go Beetle, which is a woman who is basically an anagram of Blue Beetle. She did pop up recently for another book, but yeah, absolutely really good book. Yeah. Fantastic one shot per se is also guest appearance by by the Phantom Stranger. Yes, the Phantom Stranger, along with Dr. Fate, Azrael, well it was Azel, excuse me. Along with the Quintessence, which is made up of get this. Sinestro. Barbara. A.K.A. Big Barda. Don't know why they changed the name for. The Wizard, A.K.A. Shazam. The Spectre. And Queen Hippolyta. Like, oh, that's interesting. Yep. At least got praised by Jeremy Adams is clearly a fan of the DC Comics writing this one shot. Yeah. It's just really damn good. Yep. Yeah. I'm going to give the Future State book a 9 out of 10. Oh. My final thoughts on Future Saints. It's a pretty interesting event. And with that, with this trade here, 
I have reviewed pretty much everything. Now, is there any good or bad books per se? I think the bad books are pretty good. I think the only bad ones I saw here were probably, writing-wise, The Flash. Though the artwork was really good for it. Uh, I would say the earlier ones that are not that good. I mean, I think Swamp Thing was actually pretty good. Yes. Uh, my friend Timmy was not a fan of Future State. Nope. He considered it one of the worst comics of last year. I thought they were pretty good. Though they did lead to something. Infinite Frontier. Which I found to be pretty good. I love Infinite Frontier. I'm looking forward to reviewing it. Now we're doing another finale. The Final Trade of Wonder Woman by George Perez. This book collects issues 46 to... I think it's like 57. Yeah, 46, 57. Yep. Excuse me. Now, right in here... My apologies about that. My nose gets getting stuffed up. The, the writing course is still done by George Perez... With, uh, with the co-writing done by Minnie Narwell and and the late Lee Wee. Joe Thompson is the main writer, maybe artist of the book, with Colleen Doran, Cynthia Martin, Joe Phillips, Ramo Tago, and Kevin Nolan. Yep. Yeah. Oh, in case you're curious, though, is 50 double size in here? Yes, it is. Oh, here's something you know, also you might find interesting. All the covers are done by George Press. He does not do the interior. He just does just is the writer for the book. Yeah, this is George Press's artwork. Yeah, and this book came out in 1990. Yep, 1990. So yeah, more really cool Wonder Woman stuff here. Is there any like debuts of these issues? No, not really. It does kind of because basically George Press is ending his run of the book. So. They had it where in the last issue where he basically she's saying goodbye to the woman she met back at the start of this run. Yeah, and issue 42, well, 47 actually, excuse me. Uh, she's teaming up with Donna Troy, a.k.a. Troya, for a good quick two-parter. Yep, and we also have Terry, Donna Troy's husband. And in my opinion, one of the luckiest guys in DC Comics to marry this beautiful woman. Yep. It's interesting, though, that do we have Donna Troy appeared here. This, I think, as far as I can tell, is her first time she's appeared in this book post-crisis. Yep, and it happens during, toward the end of George Perez's five-year run of the book. <clears throat> Actually, yeah, about five years. Yep. Now, the style of covers... Uh, this would be probably from the 90s. They do change the logo once, once the course, uh, oh. Willie Messel lopes up with a book with his shoes 63. Yep. I mean, aside from the stuff with that, let's see. Yeah, it's mostly put just a few issues where he was up with Donna Troy. Then we have a look back, basically, just respecting. Yeah, it, almost like a TV special for this one. Basically, a lot of things have happened the previous 48 issues for this one. We've got experience with a JLI, who she, I think she did join not long after this, like a couple years after this, she did join, briefly join the Justice League International. Yep, and we have the awesomeness that is the 50th issue. Love this cover by George Perez. It is really freaking good. And yes, it is double sided issue with these following artists. Well, uh, we have Sar Sarjo Argus, Chris Bacchito, oh, Cody Bacchilo, uh, Brian Ballard, Adam Hughes, Cynthia Martin, Linda Minnie, uh, Kevin Dolan, P. Craig Russell, Mary Severn, and Matt Wagner. Yes. Yeah, this one just, well, respecting Wonder Woman, just, well, having a good double sized story with lots of guest stars. Just a really fun issue. And then we have uh, going to Gotham City for issue 51. Yeah, and then we have Wonder Woman in this place where, oh, she apparently she where she's with several women in this room where they're all sleeping completely naked. Yes, for some reason, don't know why. This was of Hermes, though. Hermes in these issues mostly is help setting up War of the Gods. Yep, that's literally what this is. 
And we're getting toward the end of the run. Yep, we're getting toward the very end of the run. Got yeah, birthday going on here. A lot of really fun stuff though. And then of course with issue 50, uh, 52, she she basically moves out of the apartment. And now we're getting close to the very end of the run. Yeah, if we're going back to Mount Olympus, which is her ruins. And runs into Pariah. Yes, Pariah from Crisis of the Infinite Earths. Which, this was his first period since that event happened. Which, that was something to see him again. Yes. And of course, it's a premonition. Why? Because War of the Gods is coming. And of course, you have some fight with Hermes in here. Yep. Hermes has been pretty much a regular supporting character at Wonder Woman for almost the entirety of Wonder Woman's run. Of uh, George Presser, excuse me. And then issue 54, we have the, the return of Dr. Psycho. Now you might be asking, who the heck is Dr. Psycho? He's a telepath. And he's insane. Yeah. And I love the fact that this cover here is a minor homage to uh, his first appearance back. I think it was like Wonder Woman number two, I think it was. He was I think he was one of the Wonder Woman's first villains. And they bring it back here for issue. I think this is 55, right? Uh, yeah, 55. They bring it back here. It's nice Perez brings back this character toward the end of his run. Yes. And they have Wonder Woman basically be on the run. Because of stuff related to a woman, another woman. And her wanted for murder. Oh, she does eventually clear her name. And, and of course, well. The next issue, war. Yep. But this, this is good. Really good. Uh, surprisingly, there's no annual for Wonder Woman collecting this trade. No, for some reason there wasn't. I don't really know why. It's kind of weird. <sighs> yeah. The annual itself, the third annual... That was done by Willie Messer Lobes, the replacement rare with the book. So that might be collected the first trade for uh that collects Willie Messer Lobes rare with the book. And of four is not even done by him at all, it's done by Kate White, of course, it was part of the year one stuff. Year five is John Bird. Is your eight or five? And number six, John Bird, probably gonna be collected as run. Eric Luke, who did the seventh annual, the eighth annual. Is done by Darcy Young, and that was the last one they published. Yeah, it's kind of weird though. This one basically ended some manuals. Yeah. But yeah, that's going to be. Well, in the case of George Perez's run, that's going to be it. I was originally playing for Volume 6, but I actually have viewed this book before. The Wonder War of the Gods trade, which is simply put, the same trade, except they changed the cover. This trade had no reason to exist. You already have this trade already. It's called Wonder War of the Gods. It's completely unnecessary to have two trades that collect the same exact amount of issues. Yeah, the final five issues of this run, plus the four issue mini series as Bat as War of the Gods. Which is probably a pretty good story there. Uh final thoughts of George Perez's run for Wonder Woman. Really good run. This writer clearly had a lot of respect for Wonder Woman. And from what I heard, the reason why he quit the book was because DC was not doing enough to promote Wonder Woman's 50th anniversary. They are barely doing anything at all. There was also a story I heard he, that when he was working with the gods, he was also the co-artist for the Infinity Gauntlet, the original story that was the inspiration for the Marvel, for the, the the last two video movies that came out. Yes, he was co-art co for that one with Jim Starlin, but he had to leave because he was also working on War of the Gods at the same time. And he had to quit DC Comics because of this nonsense. And it took him several years to come back to the company. Which he occasionally did work for them up until 2012 where he quit. <laughs> now why did he quit per se? 
Because what happened in the first story arc, because what happened with Superman. Yes. He got a lot of conflicting stories of where the editor would not give give him answers to questions he asked. And the changes were changed or were made in the book due to inconsistent reasons why. Like, and the one question he kept asking that apparently no one could answer this question. Were the cats alive? They like confirmed, yeah, they're dead. But that was a question he had for asked several times. And he never got a clear answer about it. Which my opinion was really stupid for DC at that point. And DC lost a really good artist. And now the guy's currently suffering cancer right now. So, if I had time, throw it into this guy's medical bills. Because the guy is one damn good artist. I personally have seen him person once at a Comic Con. Excuse me, man. Yeah, I've seen once at, at Comic Con in person. Uh, the problem was I never could get an autograph from it because apparently I didn't know this because I never seen the info about this. You had to be earlier to receive a ticket for a raffle to get a not only autograph but a sketch from him. And he had a long line, so I decided to pass on it. I would have loved to meet this guy in person. I hope he's doing better. But man. If you can have a raffle, how about actually advertise it? <laughs> how about people run the convention for having this stupid idea? Yep. So, yes. So, that's going to be it for this particular review. Next one's going to be a review for Demon Slayer. Yes, I'm finally going to do Demon Slayer today. It's going to be kind of late doing it, but finally going to do it. Yep. Next video. Bye.